Hi, I'm Lynn Smallström, a UX and product designer. I recently got like my dream job. I know now work as a UX designer in Minecraft at Mojang Studios. And that's not what this video is about. But when I switched jobs, I had to do the thing that all designers dread, make my own portfolio. I don't know why it's so painful, but it is trying to have to condense yourself down to just one website. I want to make one thing clear right off the bat. I made my portfolio as a prototype. Why did I do that? Because people are interested in my design and prototyping skills, not how good I am at putting my stuff into a template website that somebody else designed. That is not interesting and it seldom turns out very good. You should do you design your own portfolio as a prototype. So I'm going to take you through how I structured my portfolio and I'm going to do this in Framer. Thanks to the people at Framer who are supporting this video. Uh, so something that always happens to me when I start making my portfolio is that I get total brain freeze and I'm like, I haven't done anything. I know nothing. And, uh, I suck at design. How have I worked for so long and have not done anything? Panic attack. So the first thing I did just to calm down that performance anxiety about making this portfolio was to make a timeline for myself of projects that I've worked on for the past couple of years. And it's just a pretty straightforward timeline um, with a font that I like and I've been using for a while and uh, a pop of color. And then after I'd done that, I could decide, I decided that I was going to do like a presentation page of myself. So this is like the landing page of my portfolio. Some feedback that I got when I was working on my portfolio was to have like your, your power stats right up top, like the coolest company you worked for, the coolest project that you've done, just put it up at the top. Won an award, put it up there. I won IT woman of the year once like it's it's in there. This is your clickbait. This is like uh, so that recruiters are like, oh, oh, right. You're the Spotify one or oh, she's the one who did the podcast. Oh, oh, she's the one with that cool side project. Clickbaitify yourself as much as you can right here. And then you write something nice about yourself. And then I put a button that takes you to the timeline that I made. I also think making a portfolio is a good exercise in trying to be kind to yourself and saying nice things about yourself. So think about that when you're writing stuff for your portfolio. So after designing the content, I make a MacBook Pro screen. I select a scroll element and I place it on here and I make that 100% wide and 100% height. And that's also a thing I like that I can design responsively like that. And after I've inserted that scroll area, I just drag the connector to the content like that. And then I can play this and oh, it's in a computer. I can do a setting here. I want it to be responsive design. And just like that, it's responsive page. So happy. And what's nice about making your prototype in Framer is that if I copy this link and I paste it up over here, I can just share this link with people and it just looks like I made a nice website that's responsive which is pretty cool. So the menu is a variable component. And what I do here is here is my primary component. And what I can do right here is add like a hover state or a pressed state, which I really like. And when I hover this, we want to add 
like a pink shadow, but it has no blur. Maybe like that. We can also add another variant. So we need to have maybe a gray variation of this text for colored backgrounds. And that we just go ahead and do right over here like that. And when you click this, it should open an overlay that comes in from the side and it try this out. Cool. So that worked. When you're working on your own portfolio, you're allowed to have a little fun. So I decided I want to have a side menu because I wanted that hamburger icon. That is an emoji. So now we have a welcome page. We have a timeline. It is time for the fun stuff. Uh, the anxiety stuff to actually make the stuff that goes in. This is a very straightforward way to structure your work portfolio project page. I put a big old um, top image up there with some nice imagery. Go find inspiration on Dribbble. That's where people are really good at making their designs look amazing. And that is the game you want to play in your portfolio. And what's really important for me is that when my portfolio is a prototype, it's really easy to link to other prototypes. So I put a big old button there, click through the prototype, and that'll take me to a clickable prototype of that work. There are five questions I like to get answered when talking about my work. The first one, who is the client? Is this real work I did at my job? If not, uh, just say that this is a project that you did on your own time to better yourself and explore what you can do. And that's really great for junior designers or people who are trying to get their first job. Like, make your schoolwork look amazing. People don't care that it's schoolwork. Just make it look great. Just let me know how you got this assignment. Number two, what is the problem? What is the problem you are trying to solve? Explain that to me so I know if you're doing a good job solving for that problem. Number three, this is the big one. How did you solve the problem? Explain your design process here. Number four, how did it go? Did the client like your work? Are the users way happier now? Did you do a usability study that show that people are happier than ever with your work? Tell people how it went or maybe that this didn't come out as intended because of uh, reasons or something. It's always so weird if people are selling their work as the greatest work ever and then you ask them in an interview, it's like, but why isn't this out? So I just address that in my uh, portfolio whenever that happens. I can still have a good process that is worth showing even if uh, the thing that I made hasn't made it to market yet. So something I did in my portfolio that I got really good feedback on is to tell people what I did on a project and what I didn't do on a project. Design is so often a group exercise and people are working together. So put a list of what you did and what you didn't do. That's gonna make you sound honest and not like you made the entire Nike brand and you did everything yourself because no, no, nobody's gonna let the intern do the entire branding for Nike, but maybe you helped. Let us know exactly what you did and be proud of that. So how did I get these really neat images of my designs for my portfolio? They look super cool. Well, I actually just used Framer for that. So here I uh, is the Xiaomi prototype. You recognize it from one of my previous videos. And if you go up here to settings, you can select a background that matches to your design. And you can also pick what hand model you like. Now I just picked this hand that looked more like mine, but I really like the diversity that's going on in here. And then I just take a, a screenshot right here to and I can insert that into my portfolio. And then you just bloop, get that image in here. 
You can also pick an unsplash image, which I have done right here. So when you click from the portfolio, just like that, you have really uh, nice looking mockups. I did not do the Xiaomi app. I just did that by myself in a YouTube video. But here I'm showing you what it would look like if I had done that project in a team. Uh, with other designers at an agency. I always try to have a pretty high line height so that it's easier to read the text. 140% is good. And I like that you can work with percentages. It makes so much sense to me. And when you have a long, long text like this, make sure to add some headlines. As you can see, the text in a UX portfolio can get quite long, so make sure it is readable and uh, correctly spelled. Don't write it straight in your design tool. Um, make sure to proofread that text. I like to use Hemingway Editor and Grammarly in combo to make sure my text is really, really good and easy to understand. You're not trying to if you're a UX designer, you want to make sure that people understand what you actually did. Don't go the route of trying to sound like all impressive with big words. Reading about good design should be just like seeing good design. You just get it. I like that it's so easy to make this my design responsive. So for this image, what I do is I just make sure that it's not like attached to the side that it will free flow from the sides as the window resizes. With me putting in minimal effort, this looks pretty okay. It is okay to say that your portfolio is desktop only. That is okay. It doesn't have you. If you want to put in extra work and get a gold star, you can pretty easily make it responsible down to mobile. But I will warn you, don't give yourself extra work when it comes to your portfolio. There's going to be a million little things that you're going to want to change and make better. And all of a sudden you've spent three months working on your portfolio, just redesigning and redesigning and redesigning it. Don't do that to yourself. Just finish your portfolio in like one week. Give yourself a harsh deadline. In one week, you are going to apply for that job that you want. One week. Make your portfolio fast because you're a designer. You, your taste is exquisite and it's going to change. Like what you want for yourself is going to change. So just do something basic and just put it out there. Send it to people. Make it good enough. Okay because you can always change it. That's also the lovely part about making your portfolio a prototype is like you can send it and then you can fix stuff. So here is a link to the prototype because I want people to click around in my design. That's really important to me. People need to understand that you know how to make things that work well. So let them click around in your designs. Clicking through a design is so much better than just showing it to someone static always clickable. So here I can, and just look how good this looks with like an unsplash image that is like, you understand that this is a, a vacuum cleaner app. It gives you a nice context and it makes my, my whole design look more fresh. Thank you Framer for helping me look so good. So that's how I made my basic page. You don't need a million things in your portfolio, like three or maybe four good, well-crafted portfolio pieces. And that's it because people aren't going to like read 14 novels when they're trying to assess if you can do the job you're applying for or not. So quality, just do three or I did four, do four and uh, do them well just four pages. You just need four pages. You can do four pages. I believe in you. So here I want to show off more than one still image. So what you can do is to make a page element right here like that. And here on this page, if I just connect this to this frame, and to this frame, which is just a GIF that I've recorded my screen and it's the GIF right there. 
And then when I play this page, so here I have this drag element just right in here and it shows the animation as well. I think you can do a lot with that effect in your own prototype, just embedding your uh, designs really. Here is my design timeline. And you know what? We should make these, the projects that I've included, we should make these into clickable links. Let's do that. So that little frame goes to there. On tap, instant transition. Yes. This one goes to this. So now in the timeline, if I click the UX redesign of the Xiaomi Home app, then that'll take me to this page. Since your portfolio is about making you look as good as possible, add stuff that is unique to you. For me, I added a page about my YouTube making because uh, I make YouTube. Not everyone makes YouTube. I want to point that out. That is something that I do that is good. I once in a while write an article on Medium. Put that on there. These are just screenshots of Medium articles with links on them. And uh, yeah, it feels like a luxe page all of a sudden when you just put it in there. I get to speak on really cool stages sometimes. So I made a page about that, how I've hosted Brilliant Minds and Women in Tech and Nordic JS and Nordic Design and figure out things that you've done that you've kind of forgotten about that you can lift about yourself so people can understand what a catch you are. I've also included links to my Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Include your social media links and use LinkedIn as your CV. Don't design your own CV. Just don't spend time on that. You don't have time for that. Focus on your portfolio. Don't design a CV. So is my portfolio perfect? No, not by a long shot. Is it the best thing I've ever designed? No, it is not, but it exists and it helped me get the job that I wanted. It's never going to be perfect because the only people who have perfect portfolios that are, are the people who are like featured on inspiration websites. All I guarantee, like almost all of those people are independent contractors who need their website to look smashing in order for them to get their next contract. Those are the people who spend the money to get somebody who's really good at coding to make their design portfolio. So now go and make your portfolio. You have one week to do it and I would love to see the results, but just do it in one swoop. It's like a Marie Kondo clean out. Answer the questions, set a deadline, pick out three to four projects that you want to document and get it done. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Unz Wallström and see you next time. Bye.